Hey all here, OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of the Go Comma 168-in-1 retro gaming console. This thing is extremely cheap at only 14 bucks right now on Gearbest, and it promises to give you some emulation style retro games on the go. Now, we have to find out whether these games are of good quality, but the image here uh, seems to advertise Mario World or a version of that, and uh, the device itself is very similar to a old-fashioned Game Boy in terms of size and form factor, and can also be connected to to a TV if you want to game on a larger display. All right, so this thing is, again, one of the cheapest uh emulation style multiple game in one consoles that you can find similar versions actually sell for about 20 bucks on amazon very simple packaging here it has a three inch lcd display promises to have six hours of continuous playback with a rechargeable lithium ion battery and uh, that's essentially it it comes in a few different color versions as well so inside we have just the gaming console on top underneath we have a very thinly printed user manual that says retro FC. We also have a video output cable, but it's using component. There's also the charging cable, which is using mini USB. Haven't seen one of these in years, uh, so that's an even older standard. The console itself, though, is uh, really what matters, and surprisingly, it seems like we have the transparent black version, actually, which is very cool. It kind of is see-through if you point at the light, which I think gives it a pretty neat touch. Definitely is a very nostalgic-looking product. Uh, you know, To anyone who's owned a Game Boy in the 90s, perhaps, would probably have fond memories looking back at something like this. We have a loudspeaker, which is mono on the bottom. We have a dedicated select and start key there's a four-way navigation toggle there are a b x and y keys and a reset key on the center there the back does feature a slot where you can see the rechargeable battery it almost looks like a nokia cell um, that uh, in the older game boys would be taking double a batteries for instance so that is a nice little improvement now as a quick size comparison here just next to a nintendo 2ds it's about half as wide but on the thickest points they actually are comparable in terms of thickness as you can see there and here just next to a cell phone this is a six inch phone so you get a better idea of what it is next to your device let's uh, see if there's any power and just turn it on here and there is a wheel on the side which seems to be controlling volume so we can turn it all the way down if we don't want that to distract our gaming experience. Um, so the LCD display here actually seems to be a IPS panel. As I'm tilting it, it seems like view angles are still decent. With that being said, it is not a laminated panel, so the distance between the plastic and the screen underneath is noticeable, which means it can glare a bit more easily under the sun or if you have a lot of lights overhead. But otherwise, it's uh, plenty bright and actually pretty decent colors for such a low-cost product. So three different languages we can select, and now we have the list of all our games. So it's uh, just going to scroll through them one by one. However, what's neat is we do have the Mario titles on here. It says Super Mario Bros. This is uh, what looks like the Super Mario 3. There's also what looks like Super Mario 6 question mark. There's also Super Mario 14, so it uh, seems like different versions of that. There's Galactica, so again, some pretty popular titles, but uh, aside from Super Mario, that seems to be the most well-known title of all, um, the rest are slightly more filler type games. So we can start the game by tapping on the bottom start key underneath, starting with the first level of the first world, and the A uh, key and the joystick is completely functional. Um, the arrow keys here don't feel the best in terms of quality. It's a little bit stiff to press, but it's also not too terribly bad. Um, the A, B, and X, Y keys are fair slightly better, and you're still able to kind of move around without too many issues there. Um, so not the most responsive thing in the world, but it is functional. And let's just continue along a little bit more with this gameplay here. Um, again, just progressing pretty well. It is just a classic title. Again, very much functional. And uh, overall, again, takes a few moments to kind of get used to the controls, but afterwards, it does feel reasonably responsive. Now, the thing to keep in mind, though, is because it is an emulator style, it doesn't actually give you the option of saving your games. So most of these are just single play anyways. So that's something to keep in mind. It's kind of a limitation of all of these consoles. We've checked out you know, versions of this in the past, so nothing has really changed in that sense. Here's Tetris. So we can actually still see kind of the copyright year information down below here, which is interesting. But let's uh, tap on start. This is going to be one player, starting with zero. And uh, let's just play silently and it really is just a classic kind of tetris here that we can move around press the arrow keys on the side there to change the orientation of the block and then press down if we want to speed the speed it up a little bit and here's tank the most interesting thing about this is since it doesn't save your state you're actually able to jump into higher levels immediately without uh, even actually accessing the previous levels or defeating them so you can actually navigate these levels up and down and select the one that you want to play so it's 
kind of like a hacked version of the game, which is kind of funny. But anyways, if I would just start with a stage one here, um, essentially we have our tank here, we can shoot and, you know, out our cannons, and then we can move around the maze to try and uh, defeat the other tanks just by navigating around. So the objective is to, again, kill all the, all the enemy tanks here and then complete the level. So here's another fighting game, it's called Jackie Chan. It's uh, licensed in 1990 by Nintendo. So it really is, um, you know, using references to older games from various systems, including actual Nintendo Game Boys of the past, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Where we're able to progress through this map, uh, the level gets, gets a little bit harder, and we're supposed to kind of fight our way through uh, these levels one by one coming up with enemies along the way. Looking closely, we also have Batman, original Spider-Man here. There's even Pac-Mania, so that's probably a version of Pac-Man here, 1942. So there actually are a few um, you know, familiar titles if you look hard enough. It seems like it's the actual games that uh, came out originally, so they are just using these uh, you know, on this console, which is actually pretty cool. So the games themselves, actually not that bad. Um, so now we can start. This is, yeah, definitely a more interesting, it's like a 3D version of Pac-Man almost with more, slightly more demanding graphics. So actually better than I was expecting, really. You can see how all the dots are actually in what looks like a Lego format, and the ghosts here are, are following me around. So this is actually a pretty nice version of uh, Pac-Man. Now there are still a few uh, imposter type games or clone games like Angry Bird. You know, it definitely doesn't belong in a retro console, in my opinion. So you can see here in this demo that it's, you know, nothing like actual Angry Birds. It's almost like a rip-off version of Mario World. Uh, so this is my example of, again, content that really isn't original. The only kind of puzzle strategy type game that I can find is Chinese Chess, or Checkers. And uh, everything else does seem to be, again, pretty much action-based games. Some other titles on here that I think are interesting include Space Invaders. There's also a version of a pinball on here, which is kind of cool. Uh, works as expected, a pretty basic game, but nice to see. There's also the Donkey Kong games on here as well. There's a version of a Bomberman, and there's also Ms. Pac-Man. So this is, again, a pretty classic title that you'll find here, um, licensed by Nintendo. So all in all, again, a fair selection of games, actually much better than I was expecting considering the really low price. I was afraid that none of the titles would be recognizable or that they would all be just bad clones of original games and uh, not be done quite as well. And that, uh, again, the construction, the design would be really cheap feeling, but this is a lot better than I was thinking. Uh, you can see the transparent plastic actually works to its advantage and it makes it look pretty authentic. So this is by no means the best gaming console ever. In fact, I think it's more as a toy, uh, not really a collector's item either, but a good way to kind of uh, spend a little bit of time or waste a bit of time if you are super bored or traveling. Again, a nice gift idea for kids, uh, especially since it's really low cost and you don't really feel bad if it breaks um, or if it's lost along the way. And again, you get more than your money's worth, I would say. So if you are into kind of retro style games, this is not a bad handheld console to take a closer look at. Uh, this one is by Go Comma, and you can find it links down below again for only 14 bucks. This is the 168 and one retro gaming console.